So this is on points of intersections. So recall that the coordinates of points of intersections, let's say for two lines f of x and g of x, the coordinates are going to equal the solutions to f of x equal to g of x. So the x coordinate for the coordinate will represent the actual uh, solution and the y coordinate will kind of represent the separate equations of what they give out and then obviously that will be the same um, value. So let's represent this graphically. So let's take a random cubic. Let's do f of x is equal to ax cubed plus bx squared plus cx plus d. And if we draw just a random cubic, it's going to look something like this, for example. And let's draw a random uh, quartic. Let's call this g of x. And this is just going to be equal to, let's say, ex to the power of 4 plus fx cubed plus g x squared plus um, hx plus i. So let's just draw a, a random um, cortex. Don't be confused by the g and the h and the g and the, uh, sorry, the g and the f and the um, the g and the f over here. They have nothing to do with each other. I've just used the same letters. These are just constants, remember. So if you just draw a random cortex, it's going to look uh, something like this. Something like that, let's say. So, if we know what the point of intersections are, we can find out what the solutions are. And in this example, it doesn't give us what the uh, point, of point of intersections are. However, we can find the point of intersections by finding what the solutions are when we equal these two equations over here. Now, the problem is when we equal these two equations over here, the way we're going to approach this is make Every, get, bring everything onto one side to make zero on the other side and then we're going to solve it. When you do that you're going to get a quartic equation that you have to solve and you are not you are not able to solve that without a calculator until you get to chapter 7. So in this chapter and in this video um, we're not going to do too many examples of when we actually solve the equation in order to get the points of intersections, mainly because for most of the examples you won't be able to do it yet until we get to chapter 7. There is a good example in the book in which you can actually find the solution without needing the chapter 7 skills and I've made a similar question myself at the end of this video um, for you to have a go at. However, this graph is still useful because the coordinates of the points of intersection are equal to the solutions to the equation. So what you can actually realise is that the amount of the number of point of intersections there are is going to be equal to the number of solutions there are. And that's still quite useful for us. So if we look at this graph, there's a point of intersection here, there's a point of intersection here, there's a point of intersection here, and there's a point of intersection here. Therefore, we know to the, uh, to the um, equation f of x is equal to g of x, we know now that there are going to be four solutions to the equation and it's very common that they could ask you that in an exam is they could give you a graph like this and they could tell you to find the number of solutions not the specific solutions but the number of solutions to f of x is equal to g of x they could ask that so all you need to do is just count the number of um, points of intersections but later on when you get the skills to chapter 7 they might ask you to actually find the specific solutions by uh, making these equations equal to each other and therefore finding the coordinates of the points of intersections so just a really quick word on proportionality. Now this is mentioned in the spec in this section, but it's never mentioned in the book. Um, I think it's probably because it's quite basic. It's actually before GCSE. Um, but as it's mentioned in the spec, I think I'll go over it um, really quickly now. So if you have a, um, an, a, an equation in the form y is equal to k x, where k is a constant, you can represent this in the form y is proportional to x. And all this is saying is that as x increases, y increases. And this could be represented graphically as when x increases, y increases. So it's going to be a straight line like this because it's just a linear x, y. Uh, so as y increases, x increases, it's going to be the straight line here where this gradient is actually going to be k so, and the uh, equation of this uh, line is actually y is equal to k 
x. So all um, this kind of uh, symbol here, which is proportional to, which is alpha, this um, symbol, all this does is kind of just sometimes simplify this equation here, because sometimes you can find that k can be quite complicated or quite a long constant. So if you write it in this form, it might shorten it quite a lot sometimes. And it's quite useful um, in order to um, uh, say it like that. So it's just another way of writing it, quite a simple way. So there's an example in the spec that I thought was quite good to illustrate it. So the circumference of a circle, remember, is equal to 2 pi times the radius, which is represented by r. 2 pi is a constant, so c is equal to kr, where k is a constant because 2 pi is a constant. So we can say that circumference of the circle is proportional to r. So if we represent this graphically, where we put c here and r here, as r increases, c increases. So we can just sketch the graph like this as a straight line saying that when r increases, c increases linearly because it's just um, it just uh, looks like that there where it's just r and c, the relationship. And the gradient of this line is going to be 2 pi, which we equal to k there, and you actually find that um, the equation of this line is c is equal to 2 pi r. So here's a question I talked about earlier, here's a question on points of intersection, so pause the video, have a go, and I'll go through the answer in about 5 seconds. Okay, so for part a, let's start by sketching the cubics, it's going to have a root at 0 and 2 and it's going to have a repeated root of 0 to the power of 2. The y-intercept is going to be 0, because remember we treat this as x plus 0 um, squared, um, and uh, then we times by um, this uh, 0 here, and it's going to be a positive um, graph, so if we sketch this, it's going to look something like this. Remember, there's a repeated root at 0. So it's going to look something like that. Remember to label so that's going to be 0 and that's going to be 2. For the quadratic, I'll do it in a different colour just to make it a bit clearer. For the quadratic, it's just a simple, it's just the most basic quadratic where there's a repeated root of 0. It's a positive graph and the y-intercept is at 0. So if we sketch this, it's going to look something like this. Something like that. And we don't really need to label because we've already got um, the zero there. So that is the answer to A. Okay, so for part B, we need to find how many solutions there will be to x squared is equal to x squared bracket x plus 2. And to do this, because we uh, have just sketched both of the graphs, the amount of solutions will be equal to the number of points of intersection. So how many points of intersection are there? There's one here at the uh, repeated root here and there is one here now really quick some of you might have drawn the graph um, slightly differently like maybe something like this and then you would have drawn the quadratic like this and if you draw it like this you might say that there's not a point of intersection you have to draw it like there will be a point of intersection, mainly because remember that a cubic is going to shoot up a lot quicker than a quadratic is going to, to the point where this cubic will 100% cross this quadratic at some point. So you have to recognise that and you have to say that there is going to be a point of intersection um, here. So the answer to this is that there are two solutions to the equation. Okay, so for part C, to find the solutions and the point of intersection, first of all, to find the solutions, we need to solve this equation, and we can actually solve this without using chapter 7 knowledge. Um, now, your first instinct might to be to divide both sides by x squared, because it's common on both sides. You can't do that here, because you know for a fact that one of the solutions is going to be when x is equal to 0. So if you divide both sides by x squared, you're going to be dividing by 0, which you can't do. It doesn't work, and the, um, the equation just won't work. So you have to go on without dividing by x squared. So you can still do it, so you're going to do x squared is equal to, and we're going to expand the brackets over here to get x cubed minus 2x squared. Then we're going to move the x squared onto the other side to get x cubed minus 3x squared 
is equal to 0. And then we're going to factorise x squared out, because it's common in both, to get x squared x minus 3 is equal to 0. And then we can figure out the solutions, because it's equal to 0. It's going to be when x squared is equal to 0, and therefore x is going to be equal to 0, um, if we square root both sides. And that's one of the solutions, which we already knew. And the other solution is when x minus 3 is equal to 0. So x is equal to 3. So those are the two solutions to the equation, when x is equal to 0 and x is equal to 3. Now to find the point of intersection, to find the point of intersection, this is going to be easy. Remember the two graphs are y is equal to x squared and y is equal to x squared x minus 2. All you need to do is sub these values separately into the equations over here in order to find what the y value would be for these um, for these x coordinates. And remember the y value for both equations is going to be the same because that's the definition of a point of intersection. The coordinates are going to be the same. So let's just sub it into the top one. So y is equal to 0 squared which is going to be equal to 0. So one of the points of intersections is 0, 0 which is this point down here, this is the 0, 0. And the other point of intersection is going to be y is equal to 3 squared, which is going to be equal to 9. So the point of intersection is going to be 3, 9. So this point of intersection here is going to be 3, 9. If you wanted to help confirm your answer, what you could do is sub your x coordinates also into this uh, equation here, and you should get out the uh, same value of y.